Well, good evening, everybody. This is John Ellis, and looks like we have a feed for Bernie Sanders and Rob Quist. And I'm just waiting for them to come back with it. That's the screen right there. This is courtesy of Q2, KTVQ.com, Montana's news leader. And uh, actually, it doesn't even say who they're an affiliate of, but uh, Q2. Awesome. They're broadcasting this, and uh, we're bringing it to you. I got Laura live, live and good with me. Oh, Made God. dinner. Came back. <laughs> yeah, hang on. I think I got your audio not functional. Where'd you go? We had a blue screen of death earlier, everybody. That was oh, a terrible thing. And it knocked everything out. Oh, no, no, no. You're audible. You are. Yay. You have voice. There we go. God, I don't even have the event up. I don't even have the event up. I don't even know if anybody's in chat. Hold on. No, there's nobody in chat. There's, there's nobody okay. going on. Uh, nobody in chat. Anyway, hi, everybody. I didn't even broadcast that we were going to do this event. And I'm going to make it public right now because that's... Uh, said, hopefully, I'll be able to make it public right now. That'd be That'd be good. Maybe not. Yeah. yeah, it looks like it's just two of us watching now. Oh, <laughs> well. <and me. laughs> it's, it's stay tuned. I'll be right back. So you know what I'm going to do? I'll, I, I, I uh, looks like I'll just cut this event and why won't it let me make it public? That sucks. <laughs> I'll make another one real quick. Hang on. Oh, no. I can make it public. There we go. Bang. All right. There. There we go. <laughs> Hi, everybody. You couldn't hear this before. All right, so unexpected. I'm looking really good, right? Been working in the yard. Uh, <laughs> Same here. All right. Well, I don't even have you up, so you're safe right now. Oh, good. But uh, my tomatoes today. This is this is Bernie Sanders, Rob Quist, uh, courtesy of Q2KTVQ.com, and we're waiting for them to come back, and we're just gonna hang out and wait till they come back. They were they were done. They had music going. It was really good. They were playing uh, banjo and stuff, and then they said, "We'll be right back." So. Hopefully they'll put back up here for it. <laughs> Laura, what <laughs> you been doing? I made dinner. I tell you, that blue apron is making a domestic goddess out of me. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Made ten, in the time I last talked to you, I made a tandoori chicken with zucchini rice and that nice cucumber yeah. thing that goes on the side. It was fabulous. Oh, oh, the, oh yeah? With the, I know yeah. what you're talking about, the cucumber thing. Yeah, I know the cucumber stuff. About. Yeah, and then Yummy. tandoori chicken with the yogurt and the yeah. garam masala. It was, oh, yeah. my God. Oh. So I'm, I'm just sweating, though, because it's totally hot here, and I completely... Is it? it? Is it you're burning up out there? Yeah, well, just, you know, slaving over a hot stove. You know how it is with us. Domestic oh. goddesses. Domestic goddess. <laughs> yes. I'm, yeah, I, understand. I do understand. Wow, that's really... Ah, Jeffrey's here. Okay. Oh, right on. We have some. Hi, everybody. <laughs> we have someone. We're just Yay. we're just taking out. We're waiting. We're waiting for it to start. You can see. I get. Stay tuned right there. It'll kick back in, and then we'll we'll be gone, and we'll we'll go to that. We're just just hanging out and chat, talking, have fun. Uh, it was unplanned. It, Laura said it was going on. Thought we'd check in. Yeah, that was yeah premeditated, but it, seat of our pants the way we like it. I I could hear since we're waiting. This will be the perfect way to make it happen. We'll push this down here. And we'll start the Rob Quist song again, and that ah. will make it happen, right, as we go to the song, because that's right, usually, exactly. usually what happens there. So, here, yeah, we'll get that pulled up. Well, this is great. This, uh, uh, this is Rob's, he actually wrote the song for his wife. We'll tell you the story. And, then, and it's, it's a good campaign song now. So. We got a good start on this and then I realized I was in a lot of ways I was writing this song for my wife as well because she was kind of being the vic victim of cyberbullying and you know as we all know and as we've all seen um, that bullies are not just on the playground they're everywhere they're everywhere through life and um, and so uh, so this song but kind of that's the way it got its roots but then I realized I didn't really have to change too much of it to be a campaign song for me too so so what's it called it's called uh, I will stand up for you. Okay. And I know people are hurting. This world can be so cruel. When ugly rumors raging around you and make you feel just like a fool. 
But you can stand with me And I will stand up for you You are not alone and I want you to know This world wouldn't be the same without you We can never be truly free Until we lift all humanity Don't ever let it get you down When trouble comes around If you stand with me Then I will stand up I'll be a strong shoulder to lean on When life seems cold and bare In every way I will defend you Count on me to be there And you can stand with me And I will stand up for you You are not alone, I want you to know This world wouldn't be the same without you We can never be truly free Until we lift all humanity Don't ever let it get you down When trouble comes around If you stand with me And I will stand up for you Stand with me I will stand up for you That was awesome. Thank you. That was just awesome. Yeah, wasn't that nice? That was very nice. That is nice. I like that. Sorry, it's the sorry third time I've heard it. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that really loud noise back. I didn't realize how loud I had one of these... When the mic up is like, like where that's coming from it's, it's all me <laughs> sorry guys and and i just realized by the way we got like more than 12 people here hey everybody and eileen thank you for joining us i had no idea that i posted it to um facebook so great glad it went there Good. <laughs> did you really i i yeah. don't know I, just, I, just, I guess i did just put it on the political revolution page oh good good i uh so here's the deal i just realized <laughs> Uh, I just realized we, we used to see this happen in the primaries and I forgot that this is what happens in the primaries with these streams. So they know that it's going on, but they don't necessarily, they're not necessarily going to cut to it on this live feed. <laughs> so there's no guarantee that we're actually going to get this event from the beginning. Uh, they're already late. They got people singing. Maybe they're just running late. Maybe the speakers haven't come up, but we don't know when uh, Q2 KTVQ is actually going to push this live feed through or if they're just storing it in the cloud for later because that's what new stations can do. So uh, we may end up here for no reason at all. Just <laughs> having a conversation again. It's been a great day for that. So if you guys find another stream of it somewhere else, let me know and we'll grab it and we'll run it. That's what we're here for. I'd hate to know that it's going on right now and we got Rob or somebody talking. And <laughs> You know. Yeah, we'll monitor it. Right now we're just above bu buffering. There is a. Uh, there's the other guy. There, there was, there's somebody else broadcasting it tomorrow. Another local station that is carrying the morning. Uh, uh, no, the 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Uh, in Montana time, Central time stream. There's a, a live channel that's doing that, or 8:30. But we will be having the uh, pseudo intellectuals episode one. Right, which is uh, a very interesting discussion. We, we, we literally did a dry run. We, we practiced this. They practiced this. I practiced listening to them. But talking about um, the depression and despair that we have right now. And, and, you know, a lot of people, why don't I just off myself? Just be done with it. This is crazy. It's insane. And, you know, uh, talking about how we handle that, how we deal with it, how we find purpose and ultimate calamity. And, and they're going to pretend they know what they're talking about. Uh, they all went to college on, for smarty pants things, so they, they should know <laughs> stuff. Anyway. It's been buffering for you for a while, Eileen. Thank you. Well, got two groups that have come on and watched nothing except for a guy who looks like he just came out of a junkyard. Um, <laughs> oh, I guess this while we're waiting for something to happen here. Let me get back to the other thing. Uh, we just found out that the previous owners of this house, Laura, 
yeah. are, are here. They just showed back up. Oh, cool. Visiting? Yeah. yeah. And they're next door at the friend neighbors. Uh huh. And like, we had no idea. I don't know why, how we got on this discussion just instantly with them showing up. But the uh, this ground all around where we are we used to be a dump in the 1900s. And just a what? A dump. Like, this was wow. where... And it's where a pharmacy in downtown Albany, at least a pharmacy, maybe other things, but most of what you find are these glass jars from the pharmacist because that's what the pharmacist took his crap and came out here and they dumped it in this area. There's nobody, like, expl- saying you could b- dump it here and not dump it there. It was basically... Yeah, gonna- that's what people did. You bury it, bury it on your property. Well, that's interesting. You can find all kinds of interesting stuff there. Yeah, and I forget how... Like at some point somebody came along or when, you know, the city got moving and she was like, no, you need to stop that now. But they pointed out to me like there's this we never knew what this big mound was in front of uh, like in the front yard. It's over on the left. Like, what is that? Is that like just a pile of dirt? And no, it's apparently part of the dump. We could dig into it right now and find shit. So like, All right. Interesting. Not, you know, that was a hundred years ago. So different now. Got, got more than 120 fruit trees growing on it, so the dump couldn't have been that bad, whatever they were putting in there. Yeah, thank, all thank kinds God of good it, stuff there. Yeah, thank goodness it wasn't fossil fuel industries. What's, so weird. what's your first harvest of the season, then? What comes first? Oh, jeez. I don't know. Plums? Usually plums. Maybe plums. I guess. I don't know. We haven't been a whole season. We have no freaking yeah. idea what comes first. Hey, everybody. Hey, Lynn and Laura and Jeffrey and... And Jupiter and Louise and Ashish. Hey, Ashish, it's been a long time. Hey, Kendra. And what's this here? That's great. Good to see everybody. We have Ashish, are, who's uh, new. Ashish Patel. That's nice. Hey. We need major changes in the U.S. Damn straight. Absolutely. We're, we're wasting time. Well, not wasting time. We're just waiting for the stream to possibly come through. We know what's going on. We know that they've got something happening there, but they've decided not to actually show it. So that sucks. But they do this. And if anybody else can find another stream of it anywhere of what's going on right now, Bernie, Rob, uh, drop it to me and we'll go. I don't have peaches. Peaches would not fare well here. Although with the climate change, maybe they would now. It's not supposed to be as hot as it was today here. Not at all. It is in the 80s. It's in the 80s. Yes, I'm live. I may not look it. I may look half dead, <laughs> but I am streaming live. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> it's just not pre-recorded. <laughs> no. No. Pre-recorded uh, uh, crappy introduction to Bernie. Uh, Q2 KTVQ. That's where we're getting this from. And nothing's happening right now. All right. So we'll just do the other funny thing, I guess. I don't know. How many of you were here this morning and have already heard all this stuff? <laughs> well, we got some new pit folks. Do it again. That was, that's, this is, it's worthy to um, explain what's going on for this election, why it's important anyway. That's true. So there, there are three people running for what's, what, what Rob is running for. And it's because mm-hmm. the guy who was in the job, or job above, I don't know, guy, it left a vacant seat. The guy who was in the job went to become the Secretary of Interior? Secretary, Secretary of the Interior, Interior. Brian Zinke. So he, res, he resigned on March 1st. So all this election, there you go. You know this all thing. this has happened since March 1st. Yeah. Crazy. So and they have to have an election within what 100 days of of the vacancy, and right. so they've got there's three candidates: Mark Wicks, who's a libertarian; Rob Quist, who's a Democrat; and Greg Gianforte, who is a businessman. You should have done that. You should have hosted the debate. You're doing better than uh, the other guy already. <laughs> and I really want some of their biological info. Oh shoot! Dude, sh- you gave it. up. You gave the. Jeez, how you sorry. do that? I'm sorry. I'm lame. All right, we're gonna. You're gonna laugh. This is. I forget the host name, but he introduced everybody and he says everything that you just heard Laura say. And then it's to see if you catch it. It's interesting. If you could get this information, would you want it? Montana's house debate. Now, here's your moderator, Jay Cohn. Jay Cohn. Jay. And good evening and welcome (laughs) to tonight's house debate with the three candidates vying for Montana's U.S. House seat. This is a historic opportunity for Montana voters. This is just the third special U.S. House election in Montana history. Unlike a vacancy in the U.S. Senate where the governor of Montana appoints someone to fill the vacancy when a vacancy occurs in the U.S. House, then a uh, special election is needed. Our time is very short tonight. We have three candidates uh, to debate. Just an hour to go, so we want to get right to our introductions. First, next to me here on the dais, Mark Wicks. 
libertarian candidate, a rancher from Inverness, Montana. Welcome, Mark. Thank you. In the middle, we have Rob Quist, the Democratic candidate, a musician from Cutbank, Montana, and Greg Gianforte, the Republican candidate on the end of our dais tonight, a businessman, entrepreneur from Bozeman, Montana. Now, we can tell you that all three of these gentlemen have websites. If you want to read more about their biological information and their stance on the issues, you can do that online. Now it's time to meet our panelists. And we have... Uh, there you go. Time to meet the panelists. Biological information from, from all of them. I, I think that's a, that's a new one. I think the, the Gianforte was the only guy who heard it and started laughing. Yeah. That's a good chuckle. <laughs> you guys were all here. You heard this already. And yes, Snork, uh, Snork uh, White K, I, I can grow oranges. I've got a lemon tree going too. We bring that in and out, do oranges if we want. But we're, we're not. We already we got too much. We're bringing in kiwis, and we're changing out some of the grapes, and we took down some of the plums because they were just old and rotten and not doing good. The trees themselves. So we're, we're making more changes. Luis says it's live on Facebook from Q2 News. So I'm looking up that. Yeah, it still grab, says stay tuned on their website. Yeah, give me that link and we'll go right to it if they're if they're showing the whole thing on the face of no, books. Twitter. That's, Where's their uh, Facebook? Oh, there it is. Thanks, everybody. Uh, I know this is exciting. Look at me here. Let's, yeah, let's here it is. I got it. I got it. I got it. Great. Dropping in live production. Somebody talking, so it's very good. Oh, there it is. All right. Planet. Thank you, Louise. Yeah. Mark. Everybody laugh at David Clark, though, so, for a second. <laughs> laugh at David Clark and his bling. Thank you. All right, here we go. I'll get that straight up in a second here. Uh, and also help them get to the polls. Or put their vote, their ballots no, in. actually. And um, these are, we want to, to champion uh, Montanans, not corporations. So let's send Rob Quist to Washington and join our beloved Senator Bernie Sanders to do that. We need your help. So please sign up, volunteer to get people out to the vote. And now please join me in welcoming Bonnie Quist. Thank you. That. Yeah, you know I got to cut the music because they're going to come in and shut it down. It's just one advantage of Facebook, everybody said. No copyright infringement at this point. Although Facebook only lets you broadcast there. <laughs> I'll tell you a little bit about Rob Quist. That might be just as good. Well, I'm Bonnie Quist, and I have had the great honor today. I'm going to deviate a little bit from my speech because it's been a, a most momentous day. I've had the great honor today of traveling with and talking to and getting to know one of my great heroes, and that's Bernie Sanders. <laughs> and Bernie Sanders probably the only one in Washington right now that is speaking up and telling the truth and telling us what is really going on in Washington. And I just read that Bernie Sanders enjoys a 67% approval rating of all Americans. And that's where the truth... That's where the truth will get you. You know, you guys are great. You're the peppiest crowd we've seen all day. So today has given me great hope in, in the light of all everything that's in the news today. It's given me great hope that people are willing to fight for democracy. We are willing to teach our children to go to the polls. We are willing to look at the issues and study what, what candidate we want to send to Washington. So it's been a really good day because it gives me great hope after the last election that we're ready to fight for democracy again. I'm a child of immigrant parents. My parents were Canadian immigrants and they, they, that's right, 
And they, fair, they homesteaded in Fairfield, Montana, and Rob's grandfather homesteaded not too far down the road in Cupbank, Montana. And my dad, my mother was a Republican, and my dad was an independent. And dad always said that he, we don't know, because we weren't in the poll with him, the polling booth, but he said that he voted for every winning candidate while he was still alive. And he took great honor in voting. The last candidate he voted for was President Barack Obama. And, <laughs> <laughs> and he was born in 1912. So to be able to vote for a young, educated black man as his last leader was a great honor to him. <laughs> now, Dad, Dad really wanted sons. He was a fiery Scottish. <laughs> Uh, German, and he really wanted sons, but he, the Lord gave him three daughters to start out with. So dad went about, he was the great, my first great champion of women that I met. He had three daughters. He taught us to be strong. He taught us to be tough. He told us that, that, that there isn't any place that we could not get to in our lives, any job that we couldn't get if we were willing to work harder than anybody else and educate ourselves so that, so that we could be competitive in any field. And Dad, you know, all of Dad's kids graduated from college, and he told us right up front, I have not given you a penny. I taught you how to work, and I taught you how to get work, and now you figure it out. <laughs> So Rob married into this Scottish, uh, fiery Scottish-Irish family, and my dad uh, just had a lifelong love for Rob. And once, in about midway in our marriage, I was down visiting dad. He lived in California then. And we were walking along the beach, and I was trying to tell him a couple stories about what I was having problems with in my marriage. And he looked at me and said, I don't want to hear that, and I just want to tell you that I'm always going to be on Rob's side. <laughs> So what he loved about Rob and what we need to know about Rob is one of the things he loved about Rob is he doesn't make snap decisions. He's a reader, he's a studier, he looks at all angles, he, he makes sure that he knows everything about a situation and an issue before he pulls the trigger and makes a decision. And that's what we need in Congress. We don't need snap decisions. <laughs> You know, because we all hear reporters, Rob was being interviewed on Montana, Montana PBS, and I was listening to it, and I think the answer that he gave that made me the most proud, they said, what would you do? Would you bomb North Korea? And a lot of politicians would go right into whether they would or not, and Rob said, no, I'm, I, would, I feel the first thing to do would be to talk to all of North Korea's allies and get their input on what is the best to do for that part of the world. It's their allies. United States just seems to go in and rob. So he said, I would gather all the information, talk to their allies, and then make a decision. And that's what we need in a leader. <laughs> the second thing I think that makes Rob, a, is important in Rob's quest to be a U.S. congressman is he's a peacemaker and a media, mediator. And he had to learn that very quickly in our family because we, had, we were a fiery bunch. So it took, immediately Rob became the mediator of the family meetings. Everybody had a chance to say, have their say, and then we came up with a solution that may not be what we wanted first, but was something we could all live with. And that's also very important for a leader, to work across the aisle and come up with a solution that will work for everyone. <laughs> So I have done, I have done my, oh excuse me, there's one more thing I want to talk about. We, we right now, and I'm sure all of you are aware of it, and it's become even more aware the last three weeks, we have an issue going on in our country that's not only going to affect us, it's going to affect our generation, our children's generation, and our grandchildren's generation. It's the most important problem that we are facing today in America, and that's our health care system. And it's absolutely paramount that we, we elect an official that is going to protect our health care situation and work to a single-payer health care. We need that.
We need a card like a Medicare card. Every other country has it. You go to see the doctor, you take out your card, and your, your health care issues are taken care of. You know, my relatives are all still in Canada, and when, I was, when the kids were growing up, I did have health care insurance because I worked for United Airlines. But ours wasn't still as good as the Canadian system. So when I went up to see my grandma, I called her doctor. He lived two blocks away. I went in. I wasn't a Canadian citizen, so it cost me $5. I walked in. It took five minutes. She gave the kids whatever shots they needed, whatever health care they needed, and it was $5 each. It was way easier than our system with insurance. So we need a new system, and we need to do it now. So I just urge you as parents and young mothers and young fathers to educate your children, talk about the issues at the dinner table, talk about research with your children, talk about the issues, talk about how important it is to vote, and take that power into your hands and vote. In the United States, we have one of the lowest percentage of voters in the world, and we need to change that. We need to take our power back, and when we're ready to do that, we'll be able to send people to Congress that we want to get there. And now, I have done my research and I have decided who I'm going to vote for and I'd like to introduce you to my husband, the father of my children, and our next U.S. Congressman, Rob Quist. Good evening, everyone. My name is Brandon Wooden Legs. I'm the executive assistant to President Kielsback of the Northern Cheyenne. <laughs> the Northern Cheyenne delegation um, with us tonight include um, President Jace Kielsback, uh, Vice President Conrad Fisher, and Councilman Waylon Rogers. It's great to be in attendance of such an awesome crowd in support of Mr. Rob Quist and his candidacy for the Montana House of Representatives. Mr. Quist visited Northern Cheyenne country in April to visit with tribal members. I personally believe Mr. Quist is going to do an awesome job in representing not only the state of Montana, but the state's first peoples as well. At this time, I would like to introduce you to President Jace Kielsback of the Northern Cheyenne Nation. Thank you, Brandon. A lot of good testimony, a lot of good uh, talk about why we're all here. But it's those who aren't here, we really need to gander their support. You know, I think about health care, and I think about not just my community on the reservation, I think about surrounding communities like Foresight, Montana, like Terry, Montana, those small communities that benefit from the Affordable Care Act and those provisions that gives you those tax subsidies and helps those hospitals in rural communities. It's not about race. It's not about uh, those issues anymore. It's all about what Montana wants and what Montana needs, and that's what we need is a fighter and a champion and a warrior like Rob Quist. <laughs> You know, we have to, as individuals, reach across the aisle and get our Republican friends and families and those independents to vote with us because Montana's been unique. We don't go on those party lines every time. And this is more important than ever. And we see it now in national politics where Montana is going to play a major role. And I want to be sure that not just the Northern Cheyenne tribe, but other tribes in our state are in solidarity because the Republican administration, the Trump administration, cannot divide and conquer our people. <laughs> cannot. Cannot pick one tribe and do consultation with them because they want to do co-development. Our tribes have other needs 
in our communities, health care, law enforcement, education, and we've never been at the table with this administration. And we know that Rob will lead us there. So with that, we want to make the announcement as a Northern Cheyenne Nation that we officially endorse Rob Quist. Our next congressman. Well, hey, Billings, how's it going tonight? It's so good to be here. <laughs> such an honor to be here tonight. Um, you know, let me just say that was such a great honor for me. Um, I grew up across the river from the Blackfeet Reservation, and um, my, my childhood friends were Blackfeet and Little Shell kids. And, you know, throughout that whole course of that, I really adopted a lot of Native American philosophies into my core beliefs. You know, I think that we really need to learn a lot from, <clears throat> from our, our Native American friends. And uh, <laughs> lessons like honoring Mother Earth and all of her inhabitants. <laughs> and to never question another person's spiritual walk. And I think the one that's probably the most apropos right now is to honor not the person who accumulates the most wealth, but the one who contributes the most, who is the most generous. You know, through this whole process, uh, we've, uh, when we started, well, let me tell you, first of all, people asked me, they said, why in the world would you want to get into the down and dirty world of politics? And I'm learning how down and dirty it is. Is anybody else sick of seeing my face on TV? You know, anybody see the debate? Um, of course, my opponent, he was kind of rattling off these false claims about, uh, you know, he's for sanctuary cities. He wants a national gun registry. He's, he's in bed with Nancy Pelosi. Well, I think I would have remembered that. It's a say anything kind of thing, but you know, um, through it all, I've just maintained that I, my philosophy is that if you take the high road, you never get stuck in the mud. And let's just talk about who is coming out, you know, uh, who is coming out and spending $5 million in these attack ads and who is also, you know, bringing out a lot of the special interest groups, you know, from Washington, D.C. I have run my campaign as a strong and independent voice for the people of Montana. We have received, uh, through contributions, we have received over 200,000 separate contributions at an average of $25 per contribution. That's what a grassroots campaign looks like. You know, uh, I think probably one of the main reasons I got into this was because my concern for public lands. You know, I realized that there are forces in this country. I mean, why do you think they're spending that much money to silence my voice and the voices of the people of Montana? They have ill designs on our beloved state of Montana. I am not kidding. This is a fight for the soul of Montana. It truly is. People like Gianforte, when they see our mountains and our streams, they probably think, well, that would be great to own and fence in and develop. But real Montanans would say, this is our way of life. You know, hiking up in the Baratus or fishing the Yellowstone, Chief Seattle said, we do not inherit the earth from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. There could be no greater truth 
in regard to this beautiful landscape that we live in. And the transfer and eventual sale of our public lands is nothing more than theft against our children and our grandchildren. I promise you, I will steadfastly defend it. You know, my opponent, he, uh, he spent $5 million, you know, running for the governor. Thank the Lord that that didn't happen. <clears throat> and now he's trying to buy this election, too. As you know, this House seat should not be his consolation prize. You know... I think that public lands was probably the number one issue, but we have seen that change in the last two weeks with the, with the passage from the House from this, what I call the Un-American Health Care Act. Because, you know, first of all, who thinks that, uh, that we have to, well, he also came out, you know, with that New York t uh, Times uh, uh, release that, uh, that he was thankful for the, the passage of this, this, uh, pa this health care bill. Yeah, thankful that 70,000 Montanans would be kicked off of health insurance. Thankful that 24 million Americans world, uh, nationwide would be kicked off. And then also that we'd bring out back the whole concept of pre-existing -exist conditions. I mean, half of all Montanans have pre-existing conditions. How many people of you right here would have pre-existing conditions? See, there is the proof right there. And then, you know, really, this isn't a health care bill. This is nothing more than a tax break for not only multimillionaires, but special tax breaks for insurance company executives. This one is a disaster, and we have to, we have to resist this one at all costs. You know, my own health care, um, my own health care issues have been well documented, wouldn't you say? But you know, the thing is, we've been doing health care rallies across the state, and we've heard story after story of people who have the same situation as I do. And, you know, the thing is, to my mind, you know, in the greatest country on earth, people should not have to go bankrupt due to health, insure, health issues. People should not have to go bankrupt. And let's talk about women's issues. We all need to resist the assault on women's reproductive rights. These are more than just women's issues. These are family issues and community issues and human issues. And I promise you that I will, I will always support access to birth control and to preventative screenings. I will oppose any effort to, dip, to uh, underfund Planned Parenthood. Politicians like Greg Gianforte have no business getting into the, the difference between the decision that is between a woman and her faith and her doctor. I support a woman's right to choose. Um, you know, I think in the debate the other night that the, uh, there was a question about Montana values. And I think if you have to ask what Montana values are, maybe you haven't been in the state quite long enough. But uh, let me just tell you what I think they are. You know, Montana is a land of untold beauty, but a country that can be unforgiving for those who are not hardy and resourceful. But <clears throat> we could not be more diverse with our Indian tribes that have been here for countless generations and you know, immigrants from every corner of the world. But we have found through all this diversity that we have our strength in our unity. We're neighbors to each other and we rely on each other. And when we have differences, we counsel together with respect to work out these differences. And we realize that we exclude no one regardless of race or religion gender, orientation, or ethnic origin. We know that life under the big sky has to work for everyone or it doesn't work for anyone.
You know, I just want to give a, a shout out to my staff. I'm so proud of the people that, that are working with me on this campaign. They have been so amazing. And I realize that the reason I have such a great staff is that there are no other elections going on in the country right now. <laughs> but they, these people are committed and they care. They deeply care. And the people that are stepping forward to volunteer, we have about 2,000 people now across the state that are working so hard to bring this home. And so I just want you to give them all just a, a little round of applause right now. And I'm asking for your vote. I'm asking for your vote, Montana. And I know that uh, I'm also asking you to help us get out this vote. You know, you need to talk to people. You need to, each one of you need to talk to two or three people and get them to the polls. We are so close to winning this. I think that we are about on the verge of making a big, a big splash that is going to be heard nationwide. You know, before I go, I'd just like to share a poem with you. Uh, John Tester has been campaigning for me, and he said, Rob, when you speak to Billings tonight, um, would you uh, recite that poem that you wrote? And so I'd like to recite it for you now. Montana. She's been called a lady when we sing her praise. And if you fail to see the logic, well then, let me count the ways. Her cirrus hair is red and gold at evening sunset's light. And I've always thought her mountains looked especially good in white. Her gown is luscious green when she attends the annual springtime ball. And she fancies orange and gold at harvest moon in the fall. Her wild and natural beauty, it will take away your breath. Oh, but just take her for granted. It could easily mean your death. She's slow to grant her favors to come lately, newer faces. To longtime suitors, she reveals her hidden, secret places. She lives in big time splendor. She's the heart of the Golden West, and all manner of wondrous creatures live and suckle at her breast. And yes, there will be those who come with schemes of ways to use her, to sell her body like a harlot, to cheapen and abuse her. If you've sworn your love for her, revere, respect her. If you're a man of honor, you must cherish and protect her. And should we fail in this task, we'll lose this living treasure. Should we prevail, this lady that we love will live forever. Well, hey, listen, I'm counting on you, Yellowstone County. I'm counting on you big time. This is the largest voting block in the state. And you know, I tell you what, if, you, if we can bring this home, it goes a long way toward winning this election. So I'm just really counting all of you to, to help us carry this out. And when you cannot stand, I'll stand for you. And when you feel like your voices are being drowned out by critics and bullies, I'll stand behind this microphone to make your voices heard. Stand with me, Montana, and I'll stand up for you. Thank you so much. I have one more thing I need to do. 
This is going to be such a great honor for me. You know, there is a visitor we have from Vermont tonight. We have had the great honor of spending the whole day with him. 4,500 people turned out in, uh, in Missoula, Montana. 3,000 in Billings. I mean, in, in uh, Butte. And of course, look at this crowd here tonight. And the reason for that is we have in this man someone who is willing to stand against all those corporate interests that are just taking advantage of the people of this country and stand with the people to, to uh, represent uh, a grassroots movement that's just been so incredible. It is my great honor to introduce to you the most popular politician in the America, Senator Bernie Sanders. Let me thank R.A.D. for their music. Let me thank Hannah Nash and Linda Wetzel and Kay Carlson. Let me thank Bonnie Quist for her beautiful remarks. And let me thank the next congressman from the state of Montana, Rob Quist. But mostly, let me thank all of you for being out here tonight. This is a great turnout. And love you too. These are, as everybody knows, difficult times for our country and there are are a lot of people who are demoralized. There are a lot of people who are in despair. But you understand that the future of this state and the future of this country is about not having people withdraw, not having people turn their backs on the problems we face, but having people stand up and fight back for justice for working class Americans. So I want to thank you for fighting for economic justice, for social justice, for racial justice, for environmental justice. Now you all know about the crises that we face. And I am not just talking about what you've read about in the last week or two, the special counsel to investigate whether the Trump campaign was acting in collusion with the Russians. And I'm not talking about the firing of the FDI, FBI director in the midst of an investigation. And I'm not talking about, and I'm not talking about uh, whether or not uh, the president provided Russia with classified information. All of that stuff, all of that stuff is important and we're going to pursue it. But what I am talking about tonight is something that predates Trump by a long time. What I'm talking about is that the status quo in Washington is not working And it has not been working for decades. And the bottom line here, the bottom line, it's not something media talks about, but it's the simple truth. We cannot continue to have a Congress beholden to millionaire and billionaire campaign contributors.
We need members of Congress who have the guts to stand up to the billionaire class, to fight for real change, and the only candidate running in this election here in Montana prepared to do that is Rob Quist. Now, Rob understands something that you all understand, and that for the last 40 years in this country, the middle class, the great middle class, has been disappearing. That we are living in a rigged economy <coughs> in which the very rich get richer and almost everybody else get <coughs> excuse me, gets poorer. And I want you to hear this. I want you to think about it for a moment. Rob understands it, and I know you do. But in America today, right now, the top one-tenth of one percent owns almost as much wealth as the bottom 90 percent. Now, in Vermont and in Montana, you got people who are working not one job, they're working two jobs, they're working three jobs. They're working 50, 60 hours a week. Mom is working, dad's working, the kids are working. And yet 52% of all new income created today is going to the top 1%. And Rob understands and you understand that the time is long overdue for us to have a government and an economy that works for all of us, not just the 1%. And that's what this campaign is about. Rob understands that it is absurd, immoral, it is wrong that this country has the highest rate of childhood poverty of almost any major country on earth. But at the same time, since the year 2000, there has been a tenfold increase in the number of billionaires in America. <laughs> Rob understands that there's something fundamentally wrong when we have veterans, men and women, who have put their lives on the line to defend us, sleeping out on the streets, and at the same time, you have large multinational corporations stashing their profits in the Cayman Islands and not paying a nickel in federal income tax. <laughs> now, Rob has the crazy idea, and I know it's a radical idea. You want to hear the radical idea that Rob... He thinks that maybe, just maybe, I know this is just a wild dream, Maybe we should have a government that represents all of us and not just the 1%. And but Rob is fighting not only against a rigged economy, which enables the very, very rich to become much richer, while most Americans become poorer, he is also going to stand up and fight against the corrupt, political system. You know, you know, Rob knows, I know, that as a result of Citizens United, that disastrous Supreme Court decision, billionaires like the Koch brothers and others are able to spend unlimited sums of money in order to win elections for the rich and the powerful. And that is why Rob understands and I understand that we have got to overturn this disastrous Supreme Court decision. And I'll tell you what I love about Rob's campaign, what makes it a unique and special campaign. He is not getting his campaign contributions from millionaires and billionaires and super PACs. He has gotten 
some 200,000 contributions from working people in Montana and all over this country, averaging $25. Some 98% of Rob's contributions are $200 or less. This is a campaign of the people, by the people, for the people. And because this is a people's campaign, Rob understands some of the most profound and important issues facing not only the people of this great state, but the entire United States. And he understands that health care in America must be a right, not a privilege. And he understands that we have got to end the international disgrace of the United States of America, our great country, being the only major nation on earth, the only one, that does not guarantee health care to all its citizens. And that is why after Rob is elected, he and I are going to work together to pass legislation for a Medicare for All single-payer program. And Rob also understands that the people of Vermont and the people of Montana are sick and tired of getting ripped off by the greed of the pharmaceutical industry. We are tired of paying the highest prices in the world for the same prescription drugs that are sold in Canada for 50% or in Europe for 30% of what we are forced to pay. Now Rob knows that while we are going to fight for a Medicare for All system, right now our immediate task is to defeat this disgraceful Republican effort to repeal the Affordable Care Act. This piece of legislation passed several weeks ago is one of the most horrific, ugly, and un-American pieces of legislation ever passed in the modern history of this country. Now, I want you to think about it for a moment. And I especially want those people here in Montana and around the country who voted for Donald Trump, because I don't think this is what they voted for. If you voted for Trump, do you really, did you really expect when he told you that he was going to provide health care for everybody, did you really think that he was going to support this Republican legislation that throws 24 million Americans off the health insurance they currently have, including 70,000 people in the state of Montana. How could anybody support legislation which dramatically raises premiums for older workers. How can anyone support legislation which cuts Medicaid by over $800 billion and Medicaid provides not only health care for lower income Americans, 60% of Medicaid money goes to nursing homes and there will be a disaster for millions of families who right now have their parents in a nursing home if this legislation were to go through. And how could anybody, including my Republican friends who talk about choice, they love choice, this legislation defunds Planned Parenthood 
denies two and a half million women the choice of the health care they want. Unacceptable. So we're going to need Rob's support in Washington to make sure that this legislation never, ever sees the light of day. There's no question but that the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, has problems. Deductibles are too high, co-payments are too high, premiums are too high, prescription drug costs are too high. Our job is to improve the Affordable Care Act now, not simply repeal it. But I want you all to know that this legislation really has nothing to do with health care. You don't throw 24 million people off of health insurance and claim it's a health care bill. What this bill is primarily and what the Republican Party today is all about is giving incredibly large tax breaks to the wealthiest people in this country. This bill, now can you imagine this? The same bill that throws 24 million people off of health insurance, raises premiums for older workers, defunds Planned Parenthood, cuts Medicaid by 800 billion, it provides 300 billion in tax breaks for the top 2%. And hundreds of billions more for the drug companies and the insurance companies. This is a disgraceful bill. This is an embarrassment to the American people, and we are going to defeat it. But it is not just this horrific health care, so-called health care legislation. Let me tell you a little bit about the Republican budget and their so-called tax reform approach. Republican Party and the President want to repeal the estate tax. The estate tax only applies to the top two-tenths of one percent. They want to give the Walton family, you all know, all know who the Walton family is? The Walton family is the wealthiest family in America, worth about $130 billion. If the Republicans and Trump get their way, the Walton family, through the repeal of the estate tax, will get up to a $50 billion tax break. <laughs> Koch brothers' family, $30 billion tax break. <laughs> Meanwhile, while the Republicans want to give these outrageous tax breaks to the wealthiest people in this country, this is what their budget says. Their budget says we're going to cut Head Start, we're going to cut Child Care, we're going to cut Pell Grants, we're going to cut Meals on Wheels for senior citizens, we're going to cut the WIC program, which is a nutrition program for low-income pregnant women and their babies. This is where the right-wing extremists in Congress are today. A $50 billion tax break for the wealthiest family in America and cuts to programs that provide nutrition to low-income pregnant women and their babies. Rob Quist is going to Congress for a whole new set of priorities. Rob is going to stand and fight and change the moral direction of the Congress. We're not going to give tax breaks to billionaires and large corporations. We're going to demand that they start paying their fair share of taxes. We're not going to cut funding for Planned Parenthood. We're going to protect a woman's right to choose.
And Rob knows that one of the reasons that the middle class in Vermont and Montana and all over this country is shrinking, why people are working two or three jobs, is that wages in this country today are too damn low. Take a look at that sign over there, living wage for all. That's exactly where we've got to go. And that is why we've got to raise the minimum wage in this country to a living wage, 15 bucks an hour for every American worker. And when we talk about wages, we've got to end the disgrace that in the year 2017, women are making 79 cents on the dollar compared to men. Pay equity for all. <laughs> Rob understands, you understand, and I understand that we are living in a competitive global economy. That the economy is changing, technology is changing. And if this nation is going to effectively compete with the rest of the world, we need the best educated workforce in the world. 25 years ago, 25 years ago in America, we did have the best educated workforce. We had more people, higher percentage of people graduating from college than any other country on earth. Today we are in 11th place and heading down. Cost of college is unaffordable. Large numbers of our young people in my state, in your state, bright kids want to go to college, cannot afford to go to college. Others are leaving school, fifty, hundred thousand dollars in debt, a debt that is strangling them decade after decade. That's why I believe that in the year 2017, when we talk about public education, we have got to be meaning making public colleges and universities tuition free. And we have got to substantially lower the levels of student debt that our people are today carrying. In Montana, I am more than aware that you have an extraordinary Native American community. And I just had, I just had before we came up here, Rob and I had the honor of sitting down and meeting with some of the tribal leaders here in Montana. And when I think about all that the Native American people have given to our country all that they have taught us, how they have told us over and over again that we must live in harmony with nature. That if we destroy the land and if we destroy the water that we drink and the air that we breathe, we are ultimately destroying the human species. That's what the Native American people have taught us. And when Donald Trump tells us that climate change is a hoax, he is dangerously wrong. The debate is over the entire, virtually the entire scientific community understands that climate change is real, that it is caused by human activity that is already causing devastating problems in our country and around the world. And we have got to remember what the Native American people have told us. We have got to transform our energy system away from fossil fuel to sustainable energy. We have a moral obligation as custodians of this earth to leave this planet 
in a way that is healthy and habitable for future generations. That is our moral responsibility. Rob understands that there is something wrong in America when we have more people in jail, disproportionately African American, Latino, Native American, more people in jail than any other country on earth. China has four times our size, communist authoritarian country. We have more people in jail than China. And Rob understands, and you understand, that our criminal justice system is broken, that we need to invest in our young people in jobs and education, not jails or incarceration. Now, Donald Trump and some of his friends are trying to divide us up. They're telling us we got to hate our Latino brothers and sisters. We got to hate our Muslim neighbors. But we're not going to fall for that. We know that we are strongest when we stand together, black and white and Latino, Native American, Asian American. And we know that in this country, if we have the guts to think big, not small, if we have the courage to take on the greed of the billionaire class who want more and more and more, who are prepared to step over working people and the elderly and the children and the sick and the poor in the midst of all of their greed, if we stand together, and if we are prepared to take them on, there is nothing we cannot accomplish together. Please don't tell me, don't tell me that in this great country, we cannot join the rest of the world and guarantee health care to all people as a right. Don't tell me that we can't have a system which allows all of our people to get the higher education they need regardless of their income. Don't tell me that we cannot rebuild our crumbling infrastructure, our roads, our bridges, our water systems, our wastewater plants, and create millions of decent paying jobs. Don't tell me with all the intelligence and energy in this country, with all of our scientists and our engineers, don't tell me we cannot lead the world in transforming our energy system and combating climate change. Now, I don't want to get you all very nervous. But the eyes of America, and actually the eyes of many people throughout the world, are looking right here at the great state of Montana and what's going to happen on Thursday. And what people are asking, is it possible for working people in the middle class to stand up and defeat the big money interest, and the billionaires who are pouring millions into this election. Now, you know, you know, when Rob began his campaign, a lot of people would say, well, you know, he's an interesting guy. He can play the guitar, can sing, he's a poet. Wow, that's really cool. But he's not serious. He can't really win this election. Well, guess what? Just came back from Washington on Thursday. You have gotten the Republican leadership very, very nervous.
You've gotten them so nervous that they're pouring all these TV ads on, you know, getting everybody sick and tired of watching TV now. All right? That's because they are nervous. Because they know that Rob's campaign has been a great campaign. And that he is on the verge of pulling off a major, major upset. And the reason that the Republicans are getting nervous is that they are wondering, how could we lose a state where Trump won by 20 votes? Can't happen. 20 points. Can't happen. And they understand that if you elect Rob on Thursday, all across this country, in rural America, in urban America, people are going to gain the confidence that they too can stand up to the big money of trust. So brothers and sisters, you are on the verge of doing something extraordinary for this beautiful state and you're on the verge of doing something extraordinary for the United States of America. So what I'm asking you to do, I don't know how many people you have here, maybe a thousand people, what I'm asking you to do in the next few days, reach out to your friends and your family and your co-workers, beg them, drag them, bribe them, do what you can, but make sure you bring them to the polls. If everybody here brings one more person, that's another thousand votes for Rob Quist. So brothers and sisters, thank you for not wallowing in despair. Thank you for standing up and fighting back. And thank you, come this Thursday, for electing Rob Quist as the next member of the United States Congress. Thank you very much. Ah, uh, reminds me of the good old days. They're back. Man, Bernie was on fire. That was pretty impressive there with the... Uh, don't tell me. That's, he hasn't done that in a while, Laura. He did the whole don't tell me. How is everybody? We get our burn in. It's pretty fantastic. Ah, you're muted. Can't hear you. Stupid microphone. There you are. Yeah, that was his third rally today. Holy cow. Third rally. I mean, you could hear his voice was... Yeah, sad. poor guy. There he is, like he's walking through the thing. I can't, I can't do the music. I don't. Know, is that Rob Quist, by the way? Is that his tune? I have no idea. Maybe we can't play. Playing, that. I don't know. You cut out too quick. Yeah. I don't, well, yeah. I don't know stuff. Hundred more than a hundred. It's been a while. So we had more than a hundred viewers at one time watching a Bernie stream. Welcome back. Hi everybody. Nice I to see you. Night. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. That's what this is, isn't it? <laughs> I'm old. I'm not doing anything. Watch Bernie Sanders. <laughs> yeah, that's, really. That's, that's my social life. Gonna curl up with a blanket and a book and watch Bernie. That's what I'm gonna do. Thank you all for being here. Tomorrow, uh, there's nothing going on in the morning. Uh, they killed their stream there. Hang on a second. But in the afternoon, if there's a Bernie going on, I'll do it. I don't think there is. Uh, if, there's one at ten. There was one at ten a.m. That's got it. There's a local feed that's running that. You guys can grab yeah. it. They'll probably push it through the Facebook okay. anyway. Yeah, we don't need to do that first thing. Cause you got. Uh, I'll push it out. No, because I got seven at seven o'clock. We've got the pseudo intellectuals join us for that. That's Ashley, Paul, and Chris. They're volunteers that's at night, here. Right? Yeah, that's at night. That's yeah. seven at night. Yeah. That's seven Pacific, and they're going to talk about serious stuff. They're going to talk about that despair that Bernie is mentioning that we're trying to get over. Right. So they're going to help people get over that despair so that we can uh, move forward and kick some ass. So all right, I, I, I really just. I don't think it would be appropriate if we just went out without something good, right? Mm-hmm. Gotta go out with something, right? I, 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 Makana. Oh yeah, grab. Think that's way better. I couldn't think. Yeah. That's better than what I had. Grab, please. Yeah, yeah. Uh, give me, give me the link for that. We drop it. 
Uh, okay. So I don't have to stand here and type in front of everybody. Okay. Yeah. That's a better one than I had. I was going to play the uh, Bernie's Religion, but that's too, it's too mellow. He, Bernie yeah. had us all fired up. We need the fire is ours. That's totally what we need. Uh, a little bit of uh, endorphin nation. Thanks, John. Yes, Phil. Exactly. It's the best drug. Bernie's the best drug. Right? It's like if yeah. there's, there's, there's uh, uh, all the different drugs you've got. Bernie. I just give me, give me a couple Bernie's. Take, give me a couple okay. Bernie's. I just dropped it in Slack. All right. Yeah, tomorrow's, tomorrow's Sunday. I, have, I, I often forget what day of the week it is. Always. It's, uh, all right. Hang on, everybody. Just. Yeah. There it is. All right. Ready? Are we ready to get out of here? Late night. Thank you, Laura Live and Good, for being here with me. Hey, my pleasure. Yeah. Thanks to everyone who came. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you, Dennis, uh, from Germany earlier. Pop it in a couple times. He's sleeping now. And uh, <laughs> Marcus. And we'll see you guys on Tuesday for Awake with John Marcus. And, and yeah, thank you all for that. And Thanks Wednesday tomorrow. for Sam Ronan on We the People. Wednesday, Sam Ronan, We the People. Join us for that. Uh, he's got, he started Our Voice, and he is also the, one of the guys who ran for DNC chair and knows about how corrupt and all the BS going on in there. And he's going to talk to us about why we need to unify. Right? And then after that, don't we have Misty Snow? Yeah. The two yeah. weeks after that. Two weeks so after we need, that. Okay. We, we, we need someone for the 31st. So if anybody has a Not progressive this. candidate. I'm happy taking a week off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, know, you don't want right. to be so booked. Okay. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, guys. No, no we'll, we'll see. If we can book somebody in that week. If you know yeah. a candidate, run them for something. And they, we just need to reach out. Laura Livengood is spending a lot of time helping book and coordinate, get all that stuff done. And we want to interview as many people as we can. Yeah. The, the thing that makes it the most valuable is if you help us spread the word, share, let everybody know that we've got this thing going on. And uh, I'm glad you got plenty of links, links Jeffrey. Yeah. yeah. Rocking for you. Thank you all so much. Thank you, JB. Yeah, I've been Alan. talking to Rob Quist's people too. So, and they oh, yeah. are, they've just been a little bit busy. That's so yeah. with the election coming up on, on, on Thursday. So, but hopefully he will win and be victorious and then we will have the winner yeah. On the show. Yeah, that would be well. That and I mean, look, he's gonna have bigger shows to do than this one. Be like, what's your draw? Well, a hundred. We got a hundred. <laughs> we had a hundred and eleven. Damn it. That was good. <laughs> Not, and we, lo we love you all. It's just I remember back in the day, Bernie. We we used to have like. It's, I'm already talking about back in the heyday. We used to have yeah, thousands of people watching at the same time. But I like having yeah. just a nice close group of people. Things are getting rolling again. You feel that? Things are getting rolling. We're getting yeah. on that that. This is this this isn't gonna stop. You realize this is going to railroad into 2018. This is campaign. Campaign season is on. It's on. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. campaign season is on, and we're going to be seeing more people come out and, and more rallies. And you know, as long as Bernie's voice doesn't give, the guy can keep going around <laughs> the fucking country. He's, he's got more energy than the candidates that have to run in their own places. He's so mm -hmm. yeah. There'd be like they need a teleporter for Bernie. Just, just, yeah. just, just, just zip him around. <laughs> Talk with Josh at. Uh, okay, you guys are recommending. Any recommendations or candidates out there, info at Bernie2016.tv. And I will say this, it really is, I, I don't do phone interviews. I would do a phone interview for Bernie only if, the, he would never do that anyway, he knows it again. You, we can help you with technology, we gotta get you a webcam, get you a microphone if you don't have it. All candidates need to be microphone and webcam capable when we talk to you on We The People. If you wanna come join on The Wake Show, then we also need to, I don't do phone. Tim Black does the phone. Go do phone with Tim Black. <laughs> I don't do yeah. that over here. <laughs> yeah. That's and and, uh, and Nicole Sandler, who's great. I love Nicole Sandler. I don't know how she's doing. I hope she's doing well. Yeah. Take, take. She's battling breast cancer. So no, I thought she was. I thought she was good and in remission. And you get it clear? Oh, yeah. Good. I, yeah, so. I, I haven't checked was, in with her in a while. No, I think. Well, I mean, maybe you know, because it. Of course, we'll, we'll have to check it anyway. Thank you guys. Thank you for being here. We're gonna go out with uh, Makana. The fire is ours, which I didn't set up yet. I was not paying attention. And maybe we could have Makana find out what he's doing. I wonder, you know, he's in Hawaii. I wonder if he's working. I wonder if he got involved with Ground Game Hawaii. He'd make a great Democratic Party leader. Mm -hmm. All right. Good night, everybody. Thank you, Peter. Good night, Laura. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you. The fire is ours. ours. <laughs> Take it now. <laughs> Don't be in despair, right? <laughs> Bernie said. Get off your ass. Fix your democracy. I've been lied to, misled, Bill.
notes about what they said lifted only to be let down I've been taken for a ride given power to decide only to find out I was wrong but I learned to tell the walls of fake it from the few really fit to run just follow the money they've been taking and the truth will shine like the sun I'm so tired of lies now babe Somebody's talking at your heartstrings, saying what you want. 